you know, you're re-recording. Uh, this is your second re-record. Yes, I feel like, I know that everybody has busy lives, um, so I, I do feel the need to like explain what I'm doing because it's not normal. Yeah. Um, basically, like, m music, I've always wanted to own my own music since sure. I started making my music. And if you probably don't know this, but most of your favorite artists do not own their work. Um, the music industry is, uh, eh, you know, um, certain corners of it. But I think that um, there was there was something that happened years ago where I um, I made it very clear that I wanted to be able to buy my music. That opportunity was not given to me and it was sold to somebody else. And so I just figured I was the one who made this music first. I can just make it again. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Um, I have to say. So that's what we're doing. So when something says in parentheses Taylor's version next to it, that means I own it, which is exciting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite. It's quite a clever a loophole, oh, Taylor. I really tip my cap. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's, you know, it's also interesting um, to kind of go back and relive this nostalgia with fans who are the reason why I get to do this and why I get to like sit here and, and like have this lovely chat with you. Um, going back and, and reliving these things with the fans and this time around, I get to really, I get to do things that I know they wish I would have done the first time. That's really Because cool. I'm always listening and I'm always lurking <laughs> and I'm, I'm always listening to their opinions and their theories and what, the, you know, they'll, they, they will let me know which songs should have been singles. Yeah. They let me know which songs did not get videos and should have gotten videos. And so I just like, you know what, like I'm listening and I'm making the videos and I'm doing the things. Really cool. You know, I've got three kids, they're all real young, they're under seven, yeah. and I'm trying to impress my music tastes on them. And I'm wondering, your kids are older, do they like Bruce Springsteen music? Um, at first, they didn't know any Bruce Springsteen music for a very, very, very long time. How do you keep it from them? Uh, strangers would come up to us and I used to always have this thing I'd tell them, I'd say, look, my job, I'm Barney for adults, all right? <laughs> and uh, that's why people keep coming up to us. And then eventually, one of my children came home from like kindergarten and said, Dad, what is 10th Avenue Freeze Out? <laughs> and I said, well, it's a song that Dad wrote. He said, play it for me. Got my guitar and I started, 10th Avenue, play it for real. <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I played him a song and he said, he got it. Uh, and then totally ignored that part of my life for most of the rest of my life. To this day, you know, they get a kick out of it sometimes. But for the most part, uh, uh, there is, I always say, no child wants to see 50,000 people cheer their parents. <laughs> You, you may want to see 50,000 people boo your parents. <laughs> I mean, that would be fun. That would be interesting. But who wants to see 50,000 people cheer their parents? No kid does, no kid. So uh, we have a very peaceful coexistence where they pretend it never happened. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they, they, got, they pick their own heroes. They don't need me. I have a clip that I want to ask you about. This is from the yeah. BET Awards. And this, I'm, I'm very impressed with you here because let's be honest, something goes wrong here and you you have an ability to recover that I'm very, should we show the clip first? Yeah, let's just show the clip and oh, then we'll talk oh, about it. Oh, you talking about the BET? Oh, yeah. you, are you going to do that to a brother? I'm going to do it to you right now. <laughs> oh. yeah. You fully, so what happened? What happened? Hey, you know what I tell people all the time? I'm only human. <laughs> so um, what happened was, <laughs> but I'm, I'm performing That's in front great, of like, man. I'm I tell you, you, you love it, right? <laughs> Sarah Apple coming to a place near you, yeah, um, very soon. But check this out. Um, I'm performing in front of like 
30 million people live on TV. I pride myself on being one of the coolest guys in the world. I don't make mistakes like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK? So I walk over the trap door. Little Kim is about to come up. I get a little excited. Kendrick Lamar is in the front. I'm competitive. I run up. I'm like, Kendrick, you see me. You see me rocking. <laughs> But I forget about the trap door behind me <laughs> sure. that was closed when I was going out to the front. Right. And so then when I turned around, it was open. Right. OK? But let me tell you this. There's a part you didn't show. I'm a superhero. OK. OK? <laughs> I go by the name of Black you Man. You just told me you're only human. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> OK, got gotcha. you. So okay. you're black, man. So I'm black, man. I'm falling through the hole. It feels like it's three hours. It's only like 2.2 seconds. Sure. My superpowers, I go, I put my arms out to the side. I push myself up. I throw myself up in the air. I land on beat. I have this embarrassing look on my face, but I'm not facing the camera. And I say to myself, you better get that look off your face. <laughs> I turn around, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, cheers to that, because I will say, every man falls down, but it's about how you pick yourself back about, up, and that was... If you fall through a hole, yeah. get up. Get back up. <laughs> Do you think aliens are real? I know that they're real. Gotcha, this isn't a thing. No, thing. this isn't a thing. How, how self-centered would we be as humans to believe that we are the only living things in the universe? Um, well, call me self-centered, because I don't believe in aliens. <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, I'm also just like a huge fan of conspiracy theories. You love theories. conspiracy yes. theories. You, uh, this is, my, I think, my favorite, because I heard that you oh. are full, you're all in on mermaids. Okay, I can explain. Great. Okay. I would like you to. So, you know Atlantis, how there was that underground sea. Yeah. Okay, or no. An underground city. You know what I mean. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, underwater city. Yes, yeah. so. I believe... We're being very convincing. I know, I know, I'm We're real convincing. We're off to a great start. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, I, I believe that there could possibly be mermaids, which is a actually an alien species that lives in parts of the Indian Ocean, which we have never explored before okay. as human beings. And Columbus, Christopher Columbus, had actually seen three mermaids on his way to America. Yeah. All right, so. I just think it's it's possible, and there's this like really extremely convincing documentary gotcha. that came out. The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was on like National Geographic, no Discovery Channel. Gotcha. And then like the next day, they had to say it was fake. And, oh, because the, they and were because the missing. mermaid lobby was like, hey, yes. you be quiet. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Look. I, you, this is the most you fun I've had during up. an interview. Yeah, I did bring it up. That's true. I Look, nothing would make me happier than mermaids being real. I'd rather live in your world than mine, where I'm a cynic, <laughs> and I just wake up every morning being like, well, I'm not going to see a mermaid. <laughs> it must be really sad, then, for you to not yeah. believe that Do you think they look like the mermaids of books? What no. You, OK. No, I mean, they're aliens. <laughs> You mentioned your family. You have a very loving, supportive family. You also might have the world's best godmother. Yeah. Dolly Parton. Pretty lucky. Yeah. You yeah. really amazing. Yeah. You guys lucky. did a Super Bowl commercial uh, yes. together. You've done uh, album work together. Which was amazing, because you know she was doing it for the phones, yet every time I coordinate and kind of communicate with Dolly, it's still through fax. You have to... So, so I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> She's rarely on the phone. So Next time we have to do it for the fax machine. So if you see her in a commercial machines. talking about how great phones are, just know that's some false well, advertising. We do use the phone, but she does a fax, and then someone scans the fax, and then they put it into a text message, and then that gets sent to me. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always signed. So now I've kind of started my own version where I go into the notes, and I've, I've, I've started to try to make my own letters because there's something so amazing. It's just about a connection. It's just not casual, you know, you know that yeah. she took the time yes. to get out, I guess, her typewriter. She also made me a, <laughs> she made me a demo one time where she talks about being super high tech, but it was all through a cassette, which then she voice memoed onto a flip phone, <laughs> which someone then put onto the iPhone, which then got sent to me. 
I like, yeah, I like that she uh, recorded on a flip phone, yes. then she FedExed you the flip phone. Yes. <laughs> she has a phone, she just doesn't use it, That's I don't really... think. I think someone uses it for her and yeah. does the fax machine through the phone. I mean, I should uh, uh, make it very clear that while we're joking about this, nothing would make me happier than if somebody knocked on my door and said, uh, fax from Dolly Parton. Yeah. I'd be like, what? From like a, a pink <laughs> pigeon or something. Yeah, exactly. a, a flamingo probably yeah, exactly. delivered There's just to like a, a pigeon knocking on the glass outside yes. the window. With long acrylic nails, <laughs> big boots. <laughs> and a blonde wig. The Dolly well, I Pigeon. I think that's Dolly's Pigeon, yeah. yeah. And now Jolene is a song, uh, the, the inspiration for Jolene, uh, if I'm correct, was a bank teller? Well, yeah, it was a girl that worked at the bank. I tell the real story when my husband and I first got married. And he was, this beautiful girl was working at the bank. She had everything I didn't like, legs and <laughs> stuff. You know, she was tall, beautiful. And he was just spending a lot of time down there. And I thought, I know we ain't got that kind of money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not right now. So he said he was down there, uh, you know, working on trying to get a loan because he was in asphalt paving at that time. So he was trying to get a you know deal on that. And I said, look, you can talk to some of these men on that. Yeah. Or you better get your butt to the house or it's going to be your ass and your fault. <laughs> so <laughs> so kind of, it was like, that was kind of the setup for it. But Jolene, of course, became a, famous. Just a, a, a giant yeah. famous song. And what would you do today if you if you ran into another Jolene with your husband? Oh, with my husband? Yeah. I'd just hide his Viagra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A lot easier now. A lot easier now. It's a lot easier now. <laughs> uh, actually, though, um, you know, Jolene was, you know, quite, quite the girl. I, I learned early on, though. I didn't, I didn't want to feel jealous because everybody has those Jolines yeah. in their life and we're kind of afraid of them. So I just thought, well, I'm just going to try to outsexy them, yeah. you know, and just try to outbeat them. So I'm 73 years old, and if you yeah, can beat exactly. them. <laughs> <laughs> So we met because you played, uh, you were kind enough to play at my wedding. I was. You played which, our first dance. I was desperate. I it was, uh, and it was great. And my wife, you surprised my wife. I, I knew did. you were coming. Um, and here's a photo to show exactly how surprised my wife was. There she is. And, uh, and I, it was, I was saying this to you earlier today. It was heartbreaking because she had not looked that happy over the course yeah. of the entire day. No, she, no. yeah. I, was, I felt like the whole day she was looking at me like, don't blow this. And then you showed up and it was like, ah! It was really weird for me because I was approached, I don't know, what was it, 48 hours before yeah, you this? Yeah, you were not given a ton of time. I was like, this is a prank. <laughs> but I was a big fan. I, th I think you're brilliant. I, th I thought it would be fun to go do. It and was I, great. I and you played this, this beautiful song called uh, She's Everything. I did. I did that. And and, uh, and I heard you actually have director's cuts of some of your songs. Yeah. Which are, and, you and rewrite the, lyrics. And the comedy special, actually. Let me, look okay. what do you have here. There you go. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that we, that I, did trying to figure out what the heck I was going to talk about was the director's cuts. You know director's cuts of movies where they have the clips that didn't make the film? Yeah. Because She's Everything is a very sweet song. It's a, it's a perfect, like, first dance at a wedding song. But what if there's lines that are more realistic, especially now that you're married, you'll understand. Okay, got it. So this is sort it's, of the, the director's cut yeah, right. married. Okay, right, gotcha. it's sort of... She's a yellow pair of running shoes. A holy pair of jeans. She looks great in cheap sunglasses. She's a passive aggressive little thing. <laughs> She's every almost everything I ever wanted, almost everything I need. You know what I mean? You're, you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> As opposed to, you know. Yeah. Uh, you do have this incredible Christmas song. We hear it all the time. Is it your favorite Christmas song? All I Want for Christmas is You. Is this the first Christmas song I ever wrote? Uh huh. And is it my favorite? I don't. I love all Christmas songs. I you mean, love I'm them all. all. Come on, there's a couple I, of dogs in I there. I love Christmas. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I, are you ever some... happy when someone starts the Twelve Days of Christmas? Depends who it is. Oh, <laughs> that's true. I guess there's some people. I guess I wouldn't be bummed if you started. I would say, oh my god, I'm gonna get so much Mariah right now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Definitely then, Twelve Days. Because you're the expert, the queen. My term, not yours. <laughs> is it? When is it too early to start playing Christmas songs? I have a whole thing about this. Okay, good. Okay, because I'm a New Yorker. Yeah. We love New York, and yeah. it's a great place to be at Christmas. Um, although, I go to Aspen because I'm guaranteed snow. Okay, gotcha. So I have to have that. You need to have snow. It's kind of a big deal to me, yes. Okay, gotcha. Santa Claus comes, there's a real sleigh with real reindeer. Right, because here in New York, he has to take the subway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, in, in Aspen, he just knows the way to my house. And oh, there it. you go. Yeah. Is Christmas a huge deal in Mariah Carey's household? Of course. You take it super seriously? 
I do, but I mean, we have fun. Like we go on a sleigh ride. Well, that's and good. Lots of things. Yes. I mean, we're we're here in our mock mock sleigh ride. You could have come to my sleigh ride, and I would have you would have been really. Next time we'll do a live remote from your sleigh ride. Yes, and we can do it like kind of like even like a bathtub sleigh ride. Like we'll have clothing. Okay. Although you know it'll just be like more relaxing. Oh my goodness. That's part of it. Every I'm know? I'm so in on this. Every part of this. <laughs> <laughs> a bathtub sleigh ride. Bathtub Sign sleigh me ride up. With diamonds. Didn't know everything. it was a thing. It's now a can't thing. stop thinking well, about now it. Now we've made it a thing. <laughs> now we've made it a thing. <laughs> we've made it Honey, a thing. Honey, I have Christmas plans for next year. Where are you yes. going? Aspen with Mariah Carey in a bathtub with Soaking diamonds. Soaking in the sleigh. I want to see if you'll confirm or deny this because Vin Diesel was on a talk show. He was on Jimmy Kimmel uh, oh, last uh, week. And he said, no, he, no, 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 no. he said he was a backup dancer for the Beastie Boys. Or a dancer for the Beastie Boys. Not even a backup dancer. I didn't even know you guys had dancers. Look, I didn't want to talk about this, but my best friend Nadia Dejani said that I have to. Yes. And Nadia and Seth are friends, and so she texted uh, Seth and yeah. was like, you got to talk to him about it. I don't want to start a whole thing, but I did see on the internets Vin Diesel, one of my favorite actors. If you haven't seen the movie Triple X, I suggest you get high or drunk and watch it because <laughs> it's funny as claimed on Jimmy Kimmel's show last week that he was a break dancer for Beastie Boys. And he was not. You, this is not true. No, he There's vanilla no iced. He's straight vanilla iced. Wow. I Where know. was the name? Where did he say it was? Danceteria? What At was Danceteria. OK. No, no, no. So what, so what I think what my wife Kathleen was saying was that perhaps we were going into Danceteria. This is a club we used to go to all the time when we were kids. And that one of us, probably Yao, because he's a nice guy, was saw this kid and was like, you know, just we'll say you're a break dancer, you know, you're with our band and blah, blah, blah. So that could have happened. But that's not the way that Mark Vincent told it or Vin mm -hmm. Diesel, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he said he was a break dancer for the PC Boys. That's weird, you guys. Well, look, I think. No? If I'm, it's a, I'm looking, I think it has an early jump on the best feud of the year, you and Vin Diesel. I'm really hoping. He's big and muscly, though. Yeah, what he is. What is. That's why I can't believe you're not out here saying, yeah, he was our breakdancer. He was great. He said that we saw him on the street breakdancing. We're like, come on. <laughs> Had that, did that ever happen with anyone? Did you ever see a breakdancer? I've, you never went, come on. I've never seen anybody on the street I didn't know and said, come on. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> That's another New York PSA. Don't see people don't on the just street. Say, Come on. Never. Don't do that. Other towns you can do that. Not I New don't York know. City. I, I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't do it, but that's me. Um, I want to do something real quick here before. You know, we... I have done that actually, but not here. I guess you're right. You have brought we, people we, with do you. Do you edit this show or no, is it this just is all? This we're is keeping all, all of this. Okay, yeah. 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 I imagine you make songs and they go out in the world, and it must be special when you hear them places you're not expecting to hear them. Maybe you hear it on the radio. Maybe you hear it in a restaurant. But you, uh, you heard that one of your songs, uh, you were told, had been uh, yeah. used in a, in a pornographic film. Yes. <laughs> and they, they did not get your permission for this? No. I signed it. <laughs> the publishing deal I signed was not good, you know, so. <laughs> I guess there was a loophole in the contract or something, and they were able to do this without asking me first. Did you at least feel that they had, um, use the spirit of the song correctly? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. Well, wow. now, what was the title? What was the title of the song? They probably did use the song correctly, because it was called Just Another One Night Stand. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they tend not. It, it, those films don't tend to have the longer relationship. It involved, <laughs> it involved a young woman wearing a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. A gas station and a couple of cowboys. Yeah. And a pickup truck. <laughs> That's all we're going to say. We don't need to keep talking about it. If you've seen one of them ever, you Pretty can probably much. finish it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the name of it. The name of the movie? Yes. OK. <laughs> it was called. <laughs> You're making me laugh. It was called All American Girls in Heat. Oh. Well. Part two. Part two. Part two. Well, that's yeah. good. I mean, uh, and do you, do, you think, do you think for people who are looking it up, they should see the first one? Do you think they'll be able to follow the plot of the second one if they have Yeah, haven't? I think yeah. they'll be able to pick up right where the other one left off. <laughs> so uh, you worked with Adam before. You also uh, worked with Fred. Oh. 
and okay. <laughs> but this is a true. Fred used to open for Wilco doing stand up. Yeah, I didn't know he was going to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> was it was it a weird vibe back in the day? He owes my wife a lot of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is a you <laughs> This is true that Fred made a mm -hmm. a, a promise to your wife. He made a he a legal document. Okay. Several times we, yeah. And now what was the uh, impetus of Fred making this? My wife gave him his start in show business uh -huh. by allowing him to answer the phones at the rock club that she owned. Okay, this is true, Fred? It's true. Okay, yeah. and so in return, what did Fred promise your wife? Uh, initially, he promised 50% of all of his earnings. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and then... When she confronted him sure, about as he it, would, if he didn't pay, he up. he said he was sorry, and it was he would give her seventy five percent. Got it. And now you've actually brought the legal document. I do have the document. Now with it me. is a video document. Yes. And Fred, you will confirm that you made this. Yes. Okay. Here is Fred, and we'll and uh, hopefully, if anybody here is in, uh, you know, the uh, uh, past the bar. I, I have my lawyer with me. Okay, actually. great. All right. <laughs> Let's see if you believe this is a legal document. This is a legal document without jokes, without irony or sarcasm. This is not an exaggeration. I, from now on, owe Susan Miller 75% of my income. It used to be 50%. It's up to 75% because retroactively going back to the amount I owe her before, I need to add to that. That is all money is brought in by any comedy or any entertainment. That is what's owed. If you are a lawyer looking at this, there's no irony in my face or like any winking. I owe this money, by the way, immediately. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a legal document. I slam dunk. But no, Fred's a little shady though, that's the problem. Is it true that when How Fred... much could it be? <laughs> How, how, how much could 10, it be? 10 grand? 10 something, grand? Something in there. Yeah, something yeah. in there. Yeah. You've made probably around 12 to 15 grand. I would say 12 yeah. to 15. So yeah. then you're getting 75% of that. You're yeah. going to do pretty well. You did something on the show <laughs> that um, I get, I will be honest, you, you, you threw your shoe. <laughs> This is a photo of you. Uh, someone was singing. They finished their song. I believe it was Try a Little Tenderness. Was that the song? Yes. Which is a, a, was a incredibly well sung. Mm -hmm. And then you threw your shoe, which I will be honest, if I was on stage and a, a shoe came up, I'd think uh, that was an unsatisfied customer. Oh. OK, It is a compliment. It is a compliment. Well, at J-Hub Productions, it's a compliment. Gotcha. Hey, come on now. Yeah. If you move me enough that I remove my shoe to throw it at you, you have done something just amazing. That's like, fantastic. it's equivalent to a standing ovation. Interesting. Yeah. Has this been your, has anyone ever thrown a shoe at you? Oh, yes. Okay. I, re I did, I had an audition for a tour with Barry Manilow, like, I don't know how many years ago that was, and I sang a song, and the people who I was auditioning in front of, they literally threw everything at me off of the desk. Wow. And I was just standing there like, oh my God, it was shoes, it was notebooks, it was pens and everything. It's like, girl, you better sing. So, when somebody's singing for me, you, you get, might yeah. catch a shoe, and if I could get this boot off right now. Yeah, well, that's now this is interesting because I, I was noticing your boots as you came in. It would see now. Do you ever think before a night, hey, I might see something I really like. I should wear shoes that are easy to get off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'll say this. If I, if I, the next time I go to see you live, I'm just gonna wear Crocs because I want to just get them, get them off. They're soft. If I should accidentally hit you in the head, you'll Maybe be fine. Maybe I should carry one in my purse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, oh, that'd but, be great. A purse shoe. That's what you a need. Purse shoe. And then people say, "Did Jennifer like you?" And they'll say, "Well, she threw a shoe, but she it was in her purse." Shoe, right. Yeah. You always have uh, great judges on the show, and then you have had Rihanna has has come on as a as a consultant, I guess. What would you? What do you call Rihanna? First, wait a minute, because I gotta. They came to me before the show, and yeah. they're like, man, Seth really wants to talk to you about Rihanna. I do, like, yeah. He's, like, obsessed with Rihanna. I kind of am, yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to know everything. So I was like, well, okay, what are we going to... So let's hear yeah. it. Well, I, let's hear it. No, I, you're the one who got to hang out with her. You tell me. Is it awesome? Yes. Yeah. She was like... The, she was asking about you. No. She I was. Really well. <laughs> Why would she? Why would somebody on The Voice ask about me? It doesn't make sense. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she's really cool. I, I actually was... I was nervous about that too because yeah. it's like it's one thing when we ask a, a mentor to help but then like the last few seasons they've had this mega mentor that comes in and it's been like right. taylor swift and you know other people right. and then but then, and then 
<laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, they really then, made an impact on you. <laughs> because it's like Taylor Swift and Rihanna are the yeah, two that stand they are. out in my mind. And, but she's so like, she's such a smart ass, man. She's, she's really, like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I'm totally going to push this girl around, you know, with my crazy wit. Yeah. <laughs> and she, I never could get the upper hand with her. She's totally, she, she, the only thing I could embarrass her about a little bit was because I was trying to get her to be like flirty a little bit, you know, yeah. I mean, why not? Right, yeah. I mean, I'm a perfect match for Rihanna. Yeah. And and so I was coming up with, with our like our couple name. And, oh, right. And Bliana was one of them. Bliana, that's good. And I tried Rake. And, and that, <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, Bliana. Actually, actually neither one of them. They're not great, but of the two, honest. Bliana's better. It's interesting you say of uh, flirting with her because I, she's one of those people that would, because she did SNL, she did music a bunch of times when I was there. And I remember once walking by the hallway and she was like, hey, how's it going? And I think I said, like, like her. <laughs> <laughs> So I think if she was asking about me, she might have been saying, she is was he like, brain damaged? Or is he... like, did he, did he ever get over the stroke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah.